a KQED television production. It kind of was like the bang that set off the night. That is the funkiest restaurant. The honey walnut prawns will make your insides smile. So. <laughs> More tortillas, please. <laughs> what is comfort food if it isn't gluten and grease? I love creme brulee. <laughs> the octopus should have been like quadrupus because it was really small. And you know that when you split something, all the calories evaporate and then there's none. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Bay Area Subaru dealers. Opportunities to test drive the 2015 Subaru Impreza are available at local Subaru dealers. Subaru, online at Subaru.com. Integrated Resources Group, over 10,000 slabs in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin, online at MarbleCompany.com. Natural Mattress Systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. European Sleepworks in Berkeley, online at sleepworks.com. Oakland International Airport, with service to Europe, Mexico, Hawaii, and across the USA. Park close, fly on time. Learn more at exploronics.com. Support KQED's vehicle donation program and donate a car to help raise funds for quality public media. Powered by cars. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This time, cardiologist Mike Wren uses his medical background to evaluate food, suggesting that taste and presentation are analogous to a physician's ability, while service is analogous to bedside manner. Finding perfection in both sets your heart aflutter. Personal transformation guides Claudia Terry. Using the power of yoga as a lifestyle, she is mindful of healthy choices and creating balance. And savoring a good meal makes her very happy. And speech-language pathologist Catherine Newton can spin a yarn. Articulating her taste for high-end restaurants, she chooses a Parisian-style bistro in Hayes Valley in San Francisco, where the chefs work calmly together in a modern setting at Monsieur Benjamin. I'm Jason Berthold at Monsieur Benjamin, and uh, you won't only find me in the kitchen, but also sometimes behind the bar. Corey Lee, the owner, had, had the vision for the place. When we plan this menu, we kind of look to almost like the greatest hits of France. Steak frites, burger, sweetbreads, bone marrow, those things kind of came up. We, you know, have the opportunity to cook through a modern lens where we have modern technique, modern appliances and equipment that we can use to make those dishes perhaps a little bit better, but also more consistent. My name is Thomas and I'm the general manager. I love meeting the guests who come to the restaurant, a lot of local from Hayes Valley neighborhood. We have people going to the opera or the symphony, people who come here to a four to five courses meal, some people who come here for a glass of wine and a salad, and people who come here for a nice Sunday brunch. So we do have an open kitchen here, and it's really exciting for me because I get the chance to watch people as their food arrives, watch them um, share plates. One of the names that we'd originally considered was the name Renard, which is Fox. Passed on that name, but Corey, the owner, threw out the name of Monsieur Benjamin. Uh, I really liked kind of what it meant, even though it didn't mean anything. And we brought back in the, the fox uh, as, as some imagery there. So the fox is now Mr. Benjamin, we think. <laughs> All right, Catherine, are you a French food lover? I am, yes. And Monsieur Benjamin is an amazing French bistro, very modern in Hayes Valley, opened by Chef Corey Lee of Benu, Michelin mm -hmm. starred chef and the uh, chef de cuisine is Jason Berthold. Who was at RN74. Yes, Monsieur Benjamin is very indulgent, very meat-centric menu, which I love. Not great for our cardiologist friend necessarily, <laughs> but. <laughs> so I typically will start with potato leek croquettes, very crispy golden fried balls, gooey on the inside with cheese, melted leeks, potatoes, 
dip them in the nice cool creme fraiche. It's lightly sweet and I always follow that with the roasted bone marrow. Very generous three bones portion, perfectly clean. The bone marrow is roasted, you can just easily scoop it right out, buttery, and it's accompanied with a smoky bacon marmalade. Are you a bone marrow lover? I tend to go to lighter side <laughs> for appetizers, I love it. I had the uh, seafood trio, I guess. It was, uh, we had a dozen oysters, mm -hmm. there was some crab meat, as well as a, a large cocktail shrimp. The oysters came with different kinds of sauces, especially the fresh uh, grated horseradish sauce. It was light, but it was actually filling. I also had the, the croquettes, and they were amazing. And I have to say that I get very excited when I go to a restaurant and I see um, sweetbreads on the menu, so I, I had to order the sweetbreads. Yes. And they were crispy, and they were buttery. It was a treat, because you don't find sweetbreads everywhere. It was the best sweetbreads I'd ever had. We ended up ordering the gratin, which was really good. The art choke it was a lovely portion to share and then I went on to order the trout that was stuffed with a cream shrimp the trout was really really tender um, the cream shrimp was perfect it wasn't too heavy it was delicious my husband who went with me ordered the chicken in a reduced wine glaze it was tender it was really juicy had a really crispy outside it was just delicious I typically will go for a lot of appetizers and then the burger the burger is classic there high fat content, sorry again, <laughs> <laughs> and they actually caramelize the onions in some of the bone marrow drippings, so if you're a bone marrow fan, that makes the burger even richer, and accompanied with crispy fries, house-made ketchup that's slightly smoky, slightly sweet. Like I said, the appetizer trio was pretty filling, so my wife actually had the sea bass, mm -hmm. uh, and I decided to go with something light. I actually asked the server for sort of a chef's preparation of a vegetable platter. Mm -hmm. There were probably seven or eight different vegetables. There were a couple exotic ones that I actually didn't know what it was. I thought it was really well done. Did you have a chance um, to watch the kitchen at all with the open kitchen? That's what I liked. It was yeah. an open kitchen, open bar. Oh, yeah, I love how peacefully they work together. It's very quiet, everything's precise. And the desserts there, I love. My favorite dessert is the crepe that is just a present. It's a soft, buttery crepe filled with little pieces. You never know what you're going to get inside. So every bite is a surprise and the flavors just melt together beautifully and I love the surprise factor of it. Well, so I have to say the best part of that restaurant was how excited everybody was to share what they were eating. We spent a lot of time talking to the people that were sitting next to us and um, when it came to dessert, we were recommended to order the ice cream. It yeah. was amazing. Um, you would come into a bite and every bite was just a little bit different because mm -hmm. you would either get more caramel or more of the cookie. Um, we would go back for the sweetbreads and the ice cream. It was phenomenal. And I right. think they put in the in the caramel. They put a little bit of the liqueur in mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. and you could taste it. It wasn't overdone. It was just just right. It's Calvados. Calvados. That's, that's what it was. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned Calvados, which is an apple brandy, basically from from Normandy in France, and they do quite a lot of cocktails with mm -hmm. it. And you know, they do have a, a small but quite well selected French wine list. Did mm -hmm. you get a chance to explore the list or a cocktail at all? Actually, I had champagne. It was great. I started with a cocktail. It was uh, the Dagger, the cognac-based cocktail with, I think, a little bit of Cabados, actually. Mm -hmm. And it was delicious. And the bartender, you could tell, really prepared it with passion. Uh, and after the cocktail, I had Muscadet. Uh, that paired well with the vegetables on the lighter side. The server we had really knew the wine and the pairing uh, mm -hmm. with the food and very knowledgeable. And I was really impressed. And the service yeah. staff, too, just like the kitchen, worked yeah. beautifully as a team. Everyone's got a role. And there's a huge service staff there, too. So you're never lacking for anything, which I think is nice. We had a really great waiter. And the best part was we took his cue for our ordering because he was so willing to just give us all the details on everything and so we felt like we were in really good hands. Yeah, it's a fine dining experience where you know all of the details of yeah. what's in the dish. Both the manager and the assistant manager came and checked several times filled water and made sure everything was okay, so they mm -hmm. really cared. Did you feel like you got value for the, for the price? For a special occasion, I thought it was a beautiful restaurant. We enjoyed, we stayed for a pretty long time. There was never a moment where we felt we were rushed to leave. Mm -hmm. So was, you felt it was more on the special occasion side? Yeah. Absolutely. All right, Catherine, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. So Monsieur Benjamin is an indulgent French bistro in San Francisco and perfect for special occasions or date nights if you're like me. All right, and Claudia? <laughs> For a little piece of Paris and San Francisco, I think that's the place to go. All right, and Dr. Mike? For unique French food uh, with excellent service and great cocktails, that's the place to be. If you would like to try Monsieur Benjamin, it's on Gough Street at Grove in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-403-2233. It's open every night for dinner and late night with brunch on weekends. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab without drinks is around $50.
Created as a gathering space for the community, Mike's Pick isn't just about the sustainably produced food. The whole place is green, incorporating reclaimed wood, cork, and bamboo. The seasonal menu is served up in Redwood City at Alley's on Main. We wanted to open a restaurant that was essentially non-GMO. We want to really have a small carbon footprint and that resulted in having a mostly organic restaurant that does everything from scratch in-house. My husband and I both love food and we really love high quality food and we just wanted to have a place where we would really enjoy going out to eat ourselves. So my husband built the place by himself and did the whole thing by hand. It's a really special place, a lot of hard work has gone into it and continues to go into it. We call ourselves a modern California cuisine, but the influences are mostly Italian and French, using local California products. We talk to our ranchers, our farmers, and they tell us what's available, what's going to be picked, and we change our menu based on that. Our cocktail program is a derivative of our food program. We make our own tinctures, we make our own bitters, and we carry wines from Santa Barbara up to Mendocino. Every chef ideally cooks to his own palate and hopes that the diners enjoy it. And I do cook to my own palate, and part of that is that I really want clean flavors, and I want good products. Look how beautiful, look at that. Now, Dr. Mike, how did you discover Alley's on Main? Well, the group of us go out to lunch every day, and one day we just bumped into this new restaurant. It had a unique feel right away. You could tell the place is really designed differently. We walked in and uh, greeted the chef. Turns out that he is an engineer from Caltech, and middle of his career decided to open up a restaurant, which is his true passion. And to me, I really felt for that because, uh, you know, it's a big risk to take when you have a stable career. And we sat down, had lunch, and it was probably one of the best experiences I've had in my life. And the name, the name comes from his wife, right? It's his wife's name. Yep, his wife is uh, gotcha. Allie. And mm -hmm. if you talk to him, he says his wife gives him a hard time for quitting his job and opening up a restaurant. <laughs> and uh, I really admire him for it. And okay. he really does a good job, puts a lot of passion into his work. My favorite appetizer is uh, the medjool dates. Mm -hmm. It's wrapped in a, a prosciutto that's mm -hmm. uh, smoked. Um, and uh, you can really taste the smoky flavor. And dates soft, sweet, but not overpowering. They didn't um, have those when I went. I was disappointed. Oh, me. really? Yeah. Actually, they get just enough ingredients for the day, so sometimes they do run out. Mm -hmm. But it's always fresh. And uh, as a cardiologist, I usually go with healthy foods. But when I'm there, I almost always go for the burger. Yes. OK. <laughs> they take the uh, uh, organic grass-fed beef, and they actually butcher and grind the meat on site. Right. Um, and I think the best part of the, actually the burger is the fries that come with it. They, uh, they uh, fry it three times at three different temperatures with cooling in between. So it stays crispy, longer. Uh, we actually asked him if they could fry, fry it for a fourth time, and, <laughs> and he said he tried it, it didn't really work out that well. So I read about the thrice fried fries, and my fries were delicious, but not very crispy. They were definitely mm. hand cut, and they had that softer, dark brown texture, which I still loved, but I didn't get the crispiness, unfortunately. You mm. needed the fourth fried fries. Yes, perhaps. Yeah. Well, I still liked them. I still liked them. They didn't need to be fried as many times, I guess. I thought they were delicious. I also had the burger, which mm. was really lovely. I had caramelized onions, five-hour caramelized onions, which were really soft and sweet and delicious with it. Some house-made pickles. Yep, and the ketchup is house-made, too. Yes. There's yeah. a little bit of uh, cumin and a little bit of curry, and it's um, you could taste it's very different than the regular bottle ketchup. And I ketchup did start with something healthier this time. I had oh. the watermelon and tomato salad, mm. <laughs> <laughs> which had just beautiful products. The tomatoes were just heirloom, really Really thick cut, thick watermelon marinated in rose water. So it had this nice, uh, light, fragrant flavor to it with some um, salty ricotta salada on top and a sweet balsamic fig glaze. So everything balanced nicely. Mm. I was a little bit disappointed in the portion size for the value, um, but it was really beautiful product and well prepared. I had the same salad and it was the rose water I mm -hmm. thought was incredible because it was this aromatic surprise mm -hmm. and it, it was, was great because the minute that we arrived I found one of my favorite things on the menu which is a pisco sour. Oh, mm. love and pisco. That's how I started my meal. It was fabulous. <laughs> love pisco. <laughs> it was great. Which is Chile and Peru's sort of signature spirit. Yes, yeah, yes. It's a great base spirit. Yes. And they do have some very good specialty cocktails. Yeah. And, and they have wine on tap. Yeah, I can't really go for 
cocktails at lunch. But the, <laughs> the, the time I went for dinner, it's though. It's good for your heart. I keep saying <laughs> that. Wine is good for your heart. So uh, last time I was there for dinner, I had the Alley's Manhattan. Actually, all the, the bitters they make on site as well. And the yeah. handmade pastas so. mm -hmm. also time consuming but delicious. We had an, one of the gnocchis, the beef cheek gnocchi. Mm. The pasta was beautifully prepared. Um, the beef cheek, again, amazing local product, a little bit overcooked. So I was a little bit disappointed in some of the preparations because the product was just such high quality. So yeah. we ate the same thing. Oh, really? <laughs> because that's what I, I was, I was, I was falling in love with the whole meal because I'm a big gnocchi fan. My mom used to make homemade gnocchi. So the gnocchi I thought was incredible. I know they make it on site and yeah. it was just really buttery and it melted in your mouth and with the beef. The perfect bite it was to just, it, too, it was not too so soggy. good. Yeah. It was a surprise. The whole, the whole restaurant was a really pleasant, pleasant surprise. I was happy to, to be able to go in there. Mm. Do you splurge on dessert when you go? The last time I was there, they had this special chocolate dish where he takes the 75% uh, cocoa and then he melts it down and then adds other ingredients mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. and it's not too sweet. We were pretty full by the time we finished yeah. and uh, the waiter brought it to us anyway uh -huh, nice. and um, he just said you have to try this it's, it's just something you don't want to miss and we were so happy he mm -hmm. did because it was really good. All right Mike this is your restaurant give us a quick summary. For a very relaxed atmosphere um, a food that's prepared with passion uh, using local ingredients um, organic, uh, Alexander Maine's a place to go. All right, and Catherine? Beautiful, sustainable ingredients and great if you're in Redwood City. Okay, and Claudia? In Redwood City, I think it's the place to stop in if you want something fresh. If you would like to try Alley's on Main, it's on Main Street at Middlefield Road in Redwood City. The telephone number is 650-995-7500. It's open for lunch Tuesday through Friday with dinner Tuesday through Saturday. Reservations are recommended and the average dinner tab without drinks is around $35. Thinking globally but drinking locally is easy to do in the East Bay's urban wine country. With the meteoric rise in urban wineries, Oakland, Berkeley and Alameda now rank among top cities with tasting rooms and winemaking facilities. Though it might seem shiny and new, these pioneers carry on a tradition of urban winemaking that dates back to the 19th century. Now more than 20 wineries exist in the East Bay including J.C. Cellars, Rockwall, Rosenblum, Covenant and & Dash and so many more. So head east and make a day of visiting one of these unique wineries and be sure to eat at one of our recommended Check Please restaurants, then share your adventure with us on Facebook. Look forward to hearing from you. Cheers. From Little Seeds, delicious oysters grow at Claudia's location. The ultimate in fresh and local seafood served up in a contemporary space with stunning views of the bay. All this is in San Francisco at Hog Island Oyster Company. We consider ourselves farmers. We came at the farm to table thing differently than a lot of people. Instead of being chefs who then have farms, we were farmers who then moved into restaurants. My name is John Finger and I'm one of the co-owners of the Hog Island Oyster Company. So I'm originally from the East Coast, went to school for marine biology, was always into food and wanted to join the two. I love the environmental part of it, that it, it took no feed or fertilizer, it really is truly sustainable and beautiful places like Tamales Bay and so decided to get into the shellfish business. We started Hog Island Oyster Company in 1983, raising Pacific oysters for the half shell, something that people really hadn't done before. My name is Chris Laramie. I'm the chef of Hog Island in San Francisco. We're committed to all things sustainable within the ocean. It's whole fish only, local, sustainable. The catch method is very important to us. We have a ton of regulars, and to see the same people over and over and over again is just a reaffirmation that we're doing a good job. Oysters are a social food that should be done with friends and, and lots of talking and laughing and all those kinds of things. Okay, Claudia, let's talk bivalves. Let's talk oysters. <laughs> oh, I love my oysters. I mean, Hog Island is from Tomales Bay and Marshall, and, yeah, but they've got this place in the city. So why the city choice? For me, to get into the city is a treat, and there's nothing like coming in through the ferry. So the way I choose to get there mm. is on the ferry. You can certainly drive, but there's something so special about taking an afternoon, getting off into the ferry building, 
and getting some fresh oysters with a view of the bay with the ferries coming in and out. It's just a very San Francisco thing to do. It's one of my favorite getaways. I have to say that I've, I've eaten a lot of things on the menu, but if it was just just me, I would go in, get some champagne, and get some oysters and call oh, it a day. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> my favorite. Are you an oyster, straight up oyster guy? or? Uh, I'm an oyster lover, and I've mm -hmm. gone to the source, actually. I've been to Marshall. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I must say, I think I'm going to save the trip from now on and go to the ferry building because, <laughs> um, yeah, you don't have to drive the two hours there, mm -hmm. and the oysters are fresh. And what I like about it is you can order other uh, items. I had the lamb mm -hmm. that day, and it was delicious. Medium rare, prepared really well. I, sh I was blown away, actually. Well, let's so. let's talk, though, a little bit about the Marshall location out in Tamales Bay, because you can grill your own oysters. And yeah, they did open up sort of a, a dining area outside yeah. now, mm -hmm. but I think the ferry building gives you a little different experience. Whenever we have out-of-town guests, that's mm -hmm. the first thing I we tell people to do. Family, yeah. Right. yeah. And what did you yeah. get when you went? I'm currently pregnant, so I didn't have any of the raw oysters, but my husband did, and he loved them and there were some from Massachusetts were both from the East Coast originally so he was happy about that. I started out with some more fried balls. I had the hush puppies. <laughs> There's a theme going yes. on. Say. The hush puppies were amazing. They tasted like buttery fish donuts actually. Mm -hmm. It came with the creme fraiche. The cornmeal was well hydrated. Sometimes hush puppies can have little hard bits of cornmeal on the outside but these were just perfect. And then we had a corn salad also very fresh. Needed a little extra salt but both of the starters were really delicious. I love that you didn't apologize to him for eating salt or I know. <laughs> Finally, yeah. getting over it. <laughs> and what did you have um, main course? Was? Um, I had the mussels and fries. The mussels, maybe a little bit of out, out of season, so I was a little bit disappointed with the flavor, but they were cooked perfectly, very tender. And the fries were Old Bay fries. I'm from the Chesapeake Bay area region originally, so I love Old Bay. My husband had the steamed clams with chorizo. It was kind of a Spanish preparation, and it was very good. So I think they probably steamed the chorizo with the clams at the same time. It lost some of its color and some of its flavor, but the broth was very rich and buttery, and it was still delicious even though it wasn't spicy. The three of us went, and uh, we were trying to decide whether to get one dozen or two dozen oysters, and we thought, you know, why punish yourself? So we had two dozen oysters, and it came with actually the sample of six different oysters, mm -hmm. including East Coast and West mm -hmm. Coast. And we had a scientific uh, method going where we had first round, second round, and then once we had our two rounds, there were enough oysters left, we had to do rock, paper, scissors <laughs> for different rounds. So, and we can't tell each other what our favorite oyster was. But my favorite was the Kumamoto's. Oh, totally. Um, Always, yeah. Sweet, yeah. very smooth. Mm -hmm. and it was just a delicious experience overall. And they have a nice little selection of wines to go with that, a little glass of Chablis or something. It seems yeah. small, but it seems like it pairs well with everything Absolutely. that's in there. And I have to say that we had the clam chowder. I mean, the clam chowder there is like no other clam chowder I've ever had, and you could taste that there was a lot of bacon and cream in it. <laughs> we used it for dipping our grilled cheese sandwich. I don't know if I could have eaten both those things alone. We shared everything. Mm. But it was it was a fun it was a fun thing to try outside of our normal just ordering the oysters. Yeah. So people have to be prepared. There can be a line. I waited for about 30 minutes or so because mm -hmm. right. they don't take reservations. But the line actually went by pretty fast. We stopped by the bar, got a couple of cocktails. Excellent. Waited there. You know, it's more of a casual restaurant. Right. Definitely. It wasn't like a formal sit-down dining experience. But the service for that type of restaurant, I thought, was outstanding. Given how busy they are and how much they're moving, um, you feel like they're just very attentive and they're they're willing to have you just take your time, taste enjoy everything, enjoy it, take it all in, there's no rush to get out. Because it's in the ferry building, you know, you can make other stops along the way. So many cute little shops mm -hmm. and um, things to look at. Our typical outing will always end up with a blue bottle coffee and a Miette cupcake. That's just sort of how we like to, that's how we roll. <laughs> so you get your oysters, so you <laughs> yeah, get your, uh, yeah. your lamb chop, then you <laughs> go for your coffee. Then you go and for a big dessert. old cupcake. It's just a really fun way to spend the day. All right, this is your spot, Claudia. Give us a quick summary. Okay, so for out-of-town guests or anybody who just wants to pretend like they're from out of town, I think this is the place to go for great oysters. All right, and Mike? For fresh, delicious oysters, save the trip to Marshall. Just have it at the Hog Island Oyster Company in the Ferry Building. And Catherine? It's a very scenic and fun, classic seafood restaurant. Definitely great place to bring out-of-town family. All right, if you would like to visit Hog Island Oyster Company, it's at the Ferry Building on the Embarcadero in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-391-7117. It's open every day for lunch and dinner. Reservations are not accepted. And the average dinner tab without drinks is around $45.
I want to thank my guests on this week's show, Catherine Newton, who led us to a modern take on a Parisian bistro at Monsieur Benjamin in San Francisco, and Mike Wren's sustainably built community gathering spot with a contemporary menu at Alley's on Main in Redwood City, and Claudia Terry's Bayside location with spectacular views and an amazing bivalve menu at Hog Island Oyster Company in San Francisco. Don't forget to go to our website at kqed.org slash check please to watch every episode, subscribe to the podcast, and find information and links to all the restaurants featured. It's also where you can apply to be a guest on the show and where you can read my notes on the delicious wines we're drinking today. And follow us on Facebook and Twitter for exclusive behind-the-scenes clips, pics, and notes from me. Facebook is the place to tell us what you think and share your dining experiences. We love hearing from you. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Bay Area Subaru dealers. Opportunities to test drive the 2015 Subaru Impreza are available at local Subaru dealers. Subaru, online at Subaru.com. Integrated Resources Group, over 10,000 slabs in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin, online at MarbleCompany.com. Natural Mattress Systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. European Sleepworks in Berkeley, online at sleepworks.com. Oakland International Airport, with service to Europe, Mexico, Hawaii, and across the USA. Learn more at iflyoak.com. Onyx, Team Talk, Redefined. Learn more at exploreonyx.com. Support KQED's vehicle donation program and donate a car to help raise funds for quality public media. Powered by cars.